Hey, welcome to Prophetic Edge. And um, today we're going to look at uh, what religion is and why I think religion stinks. And I'm going to give you a couple of things here, a couple of definition of what religion is and what the Bible actually tells us about religion. Um, there are, <clears throat> I think, three three to five reference in the Bible in regards to religion and uh, mostly in the New Testament. And so we're going to have a look at, um, you know, good religion and bad religion. And um, what I'm trying to, <clears throat> to, I guess, bring to your awareness um, today, because we're looking at this um, series of why I believe uh, religion stinks. <clears throat> uh, when I talk about religion, I'm not talking about a pure, um, undefiled religion, which I believe uh, James talks about. James basically said that, um, you know, if, if you think you're religious and you can't bridle your tongue, you can't control your tongue, then you deceive your own heart. And, um, and that um, uh, basically, uh, your religion then is um, useless, right? And uh, it says that pure and undefiled religion uh, is to visit the orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world system. So it all comes down to love. And so it's important for us to understand that um, we need to actually walk the walk of love and grace. Grace is incredible, power is incredibly powerful, and love is incredible uh, as well. It's very powerful, and so um, James actually um, encourages the church to look after the widows, to look after the fatherless, to keep oneself unspotted from the world system, right? And so let's not get this wrong. So many people, uh, you know, get this wrong. We're talking about the world system, the way that the world does things because um, the kingdom of God and the world system is, is quite different. The cultures are quite different, right? And I won't get into this because this is very tempting for me to go into, but um, that's another story. Uh, Paul actually mentioned the word religion. He says that um, in Acts chapter uh, 26, verse 5, he talked about, he talked to King Agrippa and he, he told King Agrippa about his upbringing um, when he was a youth. When he was a youth, um, he grew up in the Jewish tradition. He grew up in a sect called the Pharisee. And the Pharisees are actually the strictest of sect. And so uh, the Pharisees basically upheld Jewish laws. And, um, and Paul actually made mention of his upbringing in, the, uh, in this sect. And in this sect, he was basically taught that anybody who had <clears throat> different opinions, different set of beliefs, that, um, that they, are not, um, they are not following God, right? And so in Colossians, uh, we see in Colossians chapter 2, verse 21 to 23, Paul talks about self-imposed religion. He talks about the doctrine of man. He talks about the traditions of man. He talks about the neglection of the body which has no value against the flesh so um, there were uh, basically some type of diet say for example maybe they were fasting they were starving the body and they were trying to what many christians today talk about the crucifixion of the flesh to crucify the flesh and many people think that by fasting <clears throat> that they will crucify the flesh but paul tells us that um you know no matter no no uh, i guess uh, no matter amount of fasting you do you will not be able to crucify the flesh because paul says that the neglect of the body which has no value against the flesh 
So how do you defeat this flesh? You didn't, you, what you do is that you come to the realization that you've already been crucified with Christ and all you need to do now is to live as a son and a daughter of God, living in sync with the Holy Spirit and allowing yourself to be led by the Holy Spirit and to live in your divine nature, your new nature, right? Stop crucifying your flesh because you think that you're gonna get rid of certain habits maybe and certain addictions maybe and uh, it doesn't work friends it just doesn't work and you know i used to <clears throat> fast i went um, you know i've been on 21 fast i've been 21 day fast i've been on 40 day day fast and all that happened basically is that you keep losing weight and uh, so many people use fasting as a mean to get closer to god like i've said to you before that is, that's it, that, that is basically religion. It's man's attempt to reach God, to be closer to God. And many people do that. They, they fast because they think that they're going to get too close to God. In reality, that we are one with God. God is in us. And um, you cannot get any closer to God than what you are right now. No matter, um, no matter the amount of fasting you're doing, no matter the amount of reading and praying, <clears throat> you're doing you will not get close to god because god is in you i think the sooner we realize that the sooner sooner we understand that we will live the life that jesus has actually called us called us to live right now in the book of galatians paul addressed this issue of religion he says that basically he was a uh, very zealous for um, his religion and his zeal for God drove him to persecute the church of God that he tried to destroy. He tried to destroy the way. Remember when he went, um, you know, to on the way to Damascus when he was going to bring uh, <clears throat> the followers of Christ back to Jerusalem because his mission was to go and get the uh, followers of Jesus, uh, imprison them, and uh, maybe kill them as well. Because remember, Stephen was stoned uh, to death by the religious leaders, and Paul, who was then Saul of Tarsus, was there watching Stephen died uh, by stoning. And so that was Saul's old life now that we know that he had an encounter with god that um i'm trying to get this thing back in focus uh sorry guys uh because i'm moving too much and so now that he's had a transformation by the encounter that he had with jesus his whole life changed and now he's known to us as paul the apostle but in his previous life, in uh, his sect, the strictest sect in Judaism, he used to persecute the church. And the church of Jesus was actually very scared of him. And even when, you know, Jesus says to Ananias to go and lay hands upon Paul so that he can receive his sight, even Ananias was actually scared of Paul because they'd heard um, you know, his resume, how he used to persecute the church of Christ. And even some of the disciples didn't want to introduce Paul to uh, other disciples because they were scared. The only one that actually did that was Barnabas. Barnabas, um, you know, the son of encouragement, took Paul the apostle uh, and introduced them to the disciples. So, uh, he was quite a scary kind of guy, basically. But uh, because he had an encounter with Jesus, he developed such a love for God, such a love for the people that he went about uh, doing good. He went about um, preaching the gospel, spreading the gospel across the world and uh, did some incredible things uh, in the New Testament. And we know that Paul actually wrote most of uh, the New Testament uh, letters. Okay, we won't get into this, but I want to give you a definition of what religion means, a couple of definitions, and uh, we'll end um, 
uh, this very quickly because I want to get on point. So uh, one, of, um, one of the pastors, I'm going to give you a couple of quotes from pastors in the Christian denomination. And, um, you know, they obviously some of them are making their way out of religion and into relationship with God and what that means and what that entangles and intimacy with Christ. They are not bound by religion. They've discovered that religion is very um, detrimental to our mental health. Very detrimental to our mental health, trust me. And so, uh, Greg Laurie says this, and most of you would know uh, this quote because many Christians actually quote it. But in reality, many uh, Christian denominations still um, are very religious and they keep uh, religious laws and rules and traditions of men even in the Christian community. Like I said to you before that, you know, um, in um, Christianity, there are many denominations. There's 45,000 denominations and probably counting at the moment because uh, what, what is happening, many people are being enlightened by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is our teacher. We learn things every day and every year and there is progressive revelation and that's why we have so many denominations because uh, of um, difference of doctrine and theology right and so um, that's why i say that um, you know that christianity um, although christianity started really well uh, but then later on, uh, we saw legalism crept in the life of the church and where the Jews wanted to impose uh, the circumcision laws on the Gentiles in the book of, book of Acts chapter 15. If you can read that and how they wanted to impose the law of circumcision saying that, you know, it's okay, you can have Jesus, but you need to have Jesus plus something. You need to have Jesus plus the law of circumcision. Otherwise, you are not really saved. And that's what's happening. Religion is Jesus plus something, right? And so let's get on with this. Uh, Greg Laurie said this, Religion is man's attempt to reach God. Christianity, true Christianity, I'm going to put true Christianity in here. Um, is God's attempt to reach man, which Jesus did when the Father actually sent Christ into the world. He actually reached man. So we've already been reached by God. There is nothing that we can do uh, through religious practices, through ceremonial laws to reach God because it's already been done. You know, Jesus says it is finished. It is done. Jesus did all the heavy liftings for us. So religion says do, and true Christianity says it is done. When we understand the finished work of the cross, we will understand that there is nothing that we can do to earn God's blessings, to earn favor, to earn um, righteousness, and to earn salvation, right? And so this is important for us to understand. So that's Greg Laurie. Uh, this uh, one here, this definition is, I think, Arthur Menzies. Arthur Menzies, a pastor uh, that has been a pastor for, for, for 40 years now. He says that the religion of the world, including Christian religion, right? Including Christian religion, because sometimes when we talk about religion, we kind of think that, uh, you know, it's only in Hinduism, it's only Buddhism, it's only Islam, it's only Shintoism, it's only, um, you know, whatever religion is out there. There's 4,000 religions out there, but we don't actually consider the amount of religion there is in the Christian um, religion, the Christian denominations, right? So he says the religion of the world is all about you having to do something for God. This is very prevalent, prevalent in the Pentecostal charismatic churches. It's all about what I ought to do, what I should do, and what I need to do. What I must do and what God is demanding of me. Because many of us in the charismatic Pentecostal churches thinks that, think that we are actually... Um, we actually have a very demanding father. 
a very strict father, a very angry father. And therefore the, the character of God has been distorted and we think that God demands things from us. That's religion in order. So um, what God is demanding of me in order to be in favor or to be part or to receive his blessing. So, you know, we do things because of fear. You know, religion is full of fear. It's full of manipulation. It's full of control tactics. It's full of uh, making someone giving, offering under compulsion. And, uh, you know, sending the bait out there. If you give a certain amount of money, God's going to give you back. If you do this for God, God is going to bless you. If you read your Bible, if you, um, you know, fast, if you spend time with God, so God will do something for you. And so, friends, we need to detox from religion. I think, you know, the, the idea of detoxing, in detoxing your body, right? And the idea of detoxing your body um, it removes toxin from your body and you lose weight and you promote health. So detoxification, religious detoxification is necessary for us to lose the weight, to lose the burden, to lose um, those um, extra weight that religion puts upon us. So we need to be able to get rid of those things because I'm telling you now, what it's going to do is going to actually stifle the life of God within you. It's going to quench the passion of God within you. We need to learn to live in Christ and learn to live not for Christ, but to learn to live as new creation in Christ Jesus. Amen. So remember, I don't live for God. I allow God to live through me. For in Him, I move. Uh, I move. I, so for in Him, we move, we live, and we have our being. Right? And so that's how we need to live. And Jesus says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, He says, Come to me. I want to... I want you to understand that my yoke is easy, right? I'm not here to put uh, unnecessary demands upon you and I'm not here to, uh, to quench the love that I've actually um, given you. I want you to flourish. I want you to grow. I want you to live in freedom and liberty. Amen. And so it's all do, do, do. The more you do, the better you'll be, right? Now, let me finish with this one here. This is really interesting that um, one of the um, most, I would say, famous pastor in one of the denomination. I'm not going to I'm not going to mention his name. Uh, reason being is that, you know, I don't agree with most of his stuff, but. What he says, this one, I think he got this one right. I think it was in his right frame of mind that he actually got this one right. And, you know, we need to learn from this. So he says, there are only two religions in the world, only two. The religion of divine accomplishment, you can do nothing. God has done it all. This is what we've been talking about. That's the true message of the gospel, he says. And the second... Um, Religion is of human achievement. That's where, you know, many, many Pentecostal and Charismatics today get this wrong. And, um, and this is what's happening. This is, this is there's a massive uh, deconstruction right now that is going on in the Christian uh, community. Many people are detoxing from religion. Right. And when you detox from religion, you can kind of like you have withdrawals. You want to go back to it. But we need to keep away from religious activities where we think that we're going to earn God's blessings. We think that we're going to earn God's favor by doing stuff. Right. And so he says here that um, the second thing is that the human achievement. So you do something right? God does something and together, relatively, 
You make it to heaven and that's every religion in the world, including, I'm putting that in bracket, including the Christian religion, right? Steve McVeigh says this about legalism. Legalism is the environment in the ocean of religious rules that permeate and frame the modern religious world and sadly has contaminated and permeated the grace message by imposed religious rules and demands, right? Remember, the greatest uh, adversary of grace is religion. And the way you make spiritual progress and you get blessed by God is dependent on what you do. If you do the right thing, you're going to be blessed by God. That is legalism because it puts it, puts it all on you to earn God's blessing, to earn righteousness, to earn favor, and to earn blessings. And the more you do, the more you'll get. The more you give and the more you'll receive. I want to finish with a scripture. I haven't been able to get in, in the book of Acts chapter 15, but I will do that next time. But I want to finish with um, a scripture in um, Ephesians chapter 2. Right? I'm going to use another translation and I want you to understand how important um, this is. Um, so Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. Let's me, let me have a look if I can pull that out very quickly. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 10. I'm going to read this in, um, in another translation. This is the Mirror Bible. Now, um, our for those, for those of you, um, you know, who likes, say, for example, New King James or ESV, I want to read it in the, uh, let's have a look. I think I've got uh, ESV version here. And um, let me have a look at um, Ephesians chapter, uh, let's have a look here, chapter 2, verse 8. Then, then I will read uh, from the Mirror Bible. Uh, you know, some people freak out about um, different translations. But uh, this is what um, the ESV said. ESV says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. Now, remember this. This is not through your own faith. This is where many of us get this wrong. It is not through your own faith. It is the faith of God and the grace of God, right? It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of your own self. Did you hear this, right? And not from yourself. It is the gift of God, right? So grace is not the only gift of God here, but faith is. It's the faith of God. It's not my faith. It is the faith of God. It's, it's, it's the grace of God and the faith of God. And both of them, are the gift of God. He says, not of works, lest anyone should boast, right? And so um, when we read it from the mirror translation, I want to read it to you. And this is what it says here. It says, your salvation is not a reward for good behavior. It was a grace thing from the start to finish. You had no hand in it. Did you hear that? You had no hand in it. Even the gift to believe simply reflects his faith, right? His faith, by the gift of faith, right? By grace, you are having been saved by the gift of faith. Grace reveals who we are and the faith of God persuades us of it. So it was God's faith to begin with. It's not your faith. It's not my faith. It's God's faith. Amen. It is from faith to faith, says Paul in Romans 1, 17. Jesus is both the source and the conclusion of our faith. Now, that's good news. So what that does, my friends, it actually releases all the pressures off me to perform, to try to gain God's favor, God's grace, God's love, God's acceptance. 
It's been done. It is finished. That is the good news of the gospel. Amen. And so remember this. Remember that religion stinks. And I've given you some reason why I think religion stinks. And we're going to find out in the next video as, uh, as we go through this series. Um, this camera keeps uh, going out of focus. But God bless you. Have an incredible week and uh, we'll continue this series on why I think religion stink and how we need to get back to the grace message of the gospel. God bless you.